O oh followers of all religions! We see you wandering as a distracted thing in the wilderness of error. You are the fish of this ocean, wherefore you withhold yourselves from what sustains you? Lo, it surges before your faces. Run to it from every climate. This is the day whereon it the rocks cry out and shouts, and celebrates the praise of its Lord, that is the source of peace, safety, trust, and compassion, saying, Lo! The Father has come, and what you were promised in the kingdom of God is fulfilled. This is the word that was preserved behind the veils of grandeur, and when the promised one came to pass, it shined radiance from the horizon of the divine will with clear tokens. My body has endured imprisonment so that your souls may be released from bondage and we have consented to being humble, so that you may be exalted. Follow the Lord of joy and His dominion, and do not listen to every ungodly oppressor. My body longs for the cross, and my head waits for the thrust of the spear, in the path of the source of mercy, so that the world may be purged from its transgressions. Then the day star of divine authority has shined from the horizon of the revelation of Him, who is the possessor of all names and attributes. The people of the Quran has rose up against us, and tormented us with such a torment that the Holy Spirit grieved, and the thunder roared, and the clouds wept over us. Among the faithless is he who has imagined that hardships can deter Baha's believers from fulfilling what God, the Creator of all things has purposed for us. Say, no, by him who causes the rain to fall. Nothing whatsoever can withhold him from the memory of his Lord. By the righteousness of God. Should they cast him into a fire kindled on the continent, he will assuredly rear his head in the midmost mine of the ocean and proclaim, He is the Lord of all that is in heaven and all that is on earth. And if they cast him into a dark pit, they will find him seated on earth's highest heights calling aloud to all mankind, Lo, the desire of the world has come in his love, with his good faculties, loving senses, kindly principles, and his empathic perception. And if he is buried beneath the depths of the earth, his spirit, soaring to the apex of heaven will roll out the summons, you see the coming of the glory, you witness the kingdom of God, that is the conscience, the most gracious, and the source of will. And if they shed his blood, every drop of it will cry out and will invoke God in this name through which the fragrance of his garments has been diffused in all directions. Though threatened by the swords of our enemies, we summon all mankind to God, the designer of earth and heaven, and we offer him such aid as can be prevented by neither the hosts of tyranny, nor the advantage of the people of sinfulness. Say, O people of the earth! Scatter the idols of your vain imaginings in the name of your Lord, who is the source of joy and knowledge, and you turn to Him in this day that God has made for the King of Days. O Supreme Pontiff, who is the Bishop of Rome! Incline your ear to what the designer of decaying bones counsels you, as voiced by Him who is His most great name. Sell all the embellished ornaments that you possess, and use it in the path of God, who causes the seekers to return on the day of the Lord and the day of the return of God for the ones that are the closest to God. Abandon your kingdom to the kings, and emerge from your habitation with your face set towards the kingdom of God, and detach yourselves from the world, and speak the praises of your Lord between earth and heaven. Then he who is the possessor of names, has ordered you on the part of your Lord, who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of knowledge. You encourage the kings and say, Deal equitably with men. Beware unless you transgress the boundaries that are fixed in the book of God. This indeed becomes you. Be careful, unless you accumulate to yourself the things of the world and the riches of there. Leave them to the ones that desire them, and hold on to what has been encouraged on you by Him who is the Lord of creation. Should anyone offer you all the treasures of the earth, refuse to even glance at them. Be as your Lord has been. Then the tongue of revelation has spoken what God has made the ornament of the book of creation. Consider a pearl that shines by virtue of its inborn nature. If it is covered with silk, its luster and perfection will be concealed. Likewise, man's distinction lies in the excellence of his conduct and in the pursuit of what benefits his station, not in childish play and pastimes. Know that your true adornment consists in the love of God and in your detachment from all except Him, and not in the luxuries that you possess. Abandon them to those who seek after them and turn to God, He who causes the rivers to flow. Whatever proceeded from the tongue of Christ that was revealed in parables, while he who proclaims the truth in this day speaks clear and exact without parables, but you still do not understand them. Listen unless you cling to the cord of idle fantasy and withhold yourself from what has been commanded by the kingdom of God, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of kindness. 
Should the inebriation of the wine of my verses seize you, and you decide to present yourself before the throne of your Lord, that is the Creator of earth and heaven, make my love your garment, and your shield the memory of me, and your provision the reliance on God, that is the revealer of all good will. O followers of Christ! We have once again sent John to you, and he truly has cried out in the wilderness of the Bion, O people of the world! Cleanse your eyes! The day whereon it you can see the promised one and attain to him has drawn near. O followers of the gospel! Prepare the way. The day of the advent of the joyful Lord is at hand. Make ready to enter the kingdom. This has been commanded by God, that is he who causes the dawn to break. Give ear to what the dove of eternity warbles upon the twigs of the divine lote tree, O followers of the Son. We sent forth him who was named John to baptize you with water, so that your bodies might be cleansed for the appearance of the Messiah. He, in turn, purified you with the fire of love and the water of the Holy Spirit in anticipation of these days whereon at the source of mercy has purposed to cleanse you with the water of life at the hands of His loving providence. This is that matchless one foretold by Isaiah, and the Comforter concerning whom the Holy Spirit had covenanted with you. Open your eyes, O congregation of bishops, so that you may see your Lord seated upon the throne of compassion and joy. Say, O people of all faiths! Walk not in the ways of them that followed the Pharisees and then veiled themselves from the Spirit of God. They truly have strayed and are in error. The ancient perfection has come in His most great name, and He wishes to admit all mankind into His most holy kingdom. The pure in mind see the kingdom of God before their face. Make this your most important goal, and follow not the infidel and the ungodly. Should your eye be opposed to the kingdom of God, pluck it out. This has been decreed by the pen of the Ancient of Days, as ordered by Him who is the Lord of the entire creation. He truly has come again so that you might be redeemed, O people of the earth. Will you kill Him who desires to grant you eternal life? Fear disobeying God, O you who are endued with insight. O people! Listen to what has been revealed by your Lord, the source of all joy, and turn your faces to God, the Lord of this world and of the world to come. Then does He who is the dawning place of the day star of divine inspiration command you as ordered by the designer of all mankind. We truly have created you for the light, and desire not to abandon you to the fire. Come forth, O people, from darkness by the grace of this sun that has shined above the horizon of divine providence, and turn to there with sanctified minds and assured souls, with seeing eyes and beaming faces. Then you counsel them with the supreme commander from the scene of His empathic glory so that by perchance his summons may draw you near to the kingdom of his names. Blessed is the one who has remained faithful to the covenant of God, and woe happens to him who has broken it and distrusted in him, who is the knower of secrets. Say, this is the day of rewards. Hurry yourselves so that I may make you monarchs in the realms of my kingdom. If you follow me, you will see what you were promised, and I will make you my companions in the dominion of my love and the intimates of my empathy, in the heaven of my good will forevermore. If you rebel against me, I will in my mercy endure it patiently, so that happily you may awaken and rise up from the couch of thoughtlessness. So my mercy has encompassed you. You fear displeasing God and follow not in the ways of those who have turned away from His face, though they invoke His name in the daytime and in the night. Truly, the day of ingathering has come, and all things have been separated from each other. He has stored away what He chose in the vessels of moral correctness, and cast into the fire who deserved it. So it has been decreed by your Lord, that is the mighty, and the loving, in this promised day. He truly commands what he is ordered by God. There is no other God except him, that is the source of humble goodness and justice. The desire of the divine sifter has been to store up every good thing for my own self. Nothing has he spoken except to acquaint you with my perception and to guide you to the path of him whose mention has adorned all the sacred books. Say, O congregation of Christians! We have on previous occasions, revealed ourself to you, but you did not recognize us. This is you rejecting another occasion granted to you. This is the day of God, you turn to Him. He truly has come down from heaven even as He came down the first time, and He desires to shelter you beneath the shade of His mercy. He truly is the exalted, that is the mighty, and the supreme assistant. The beloved one, love only God and do not be consumed with the fire of your desires. Were you to be shut out as by a veil from him, this would be for no other reason than your own waywardness and ignorance. You make mention of me, but know me not. You call on me, but do not read or listen to my revelations, 
notwithstanding that I came to you from the heaven of pre-existence with surpassing glory. Rip the veils apart in my name and through the power of my goodness, so that you may discover a path to your Lord. The King of Joy proclaims from the tabernacle, the higher perception, of love and kindness is call, saying, O people of the Gospel! They who were not in the kingdom have now entered it, while we see you in this day habitually lingering at the gate. Rip the veils apart by humbling yourself to your Lord, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of kindness, and then enter in my name into my kingdom. Then you direct he who desires for you everlasting life. He truly is potent over all things. Blessed are those who have recognized the loving light and run to it. They truly live in the kingdom of God, and partake of the living food, good emotions, and living water, thoughtful kindness, of God's chosen ones. O children of the kingdom, we see you in darkness. This truly does not benefit you. Are you in the face of the light, fearful because of your deeds? Direct yourselves towards Him. Your Lord, the source of all joy, has blessed His lands with His footsteps. Then we do make plain to you the path of Him whom the Spirit prophesied about. I truly bear witness to Him, even as He has borne witness to me. Truly, He said, You come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. In this day, however, we say, You come after me, so that we may make you to become the revivers of mankind. Then the decree has been inscribed in this tablet by the pen of Revelation. O pen of the compassionate one! Arouse yourself in memory of other kings in this blessed and luminous book, so that by perchance they may rise from the couch of thoughtlessness and give ear to what the nightingale sings upon the branches of the divine lote tree, and run to God in this joyful and kind revelation. Napoleon III. O King of Paris! Tell the priests to ring the bells no longer. By God, the True One. The bell of love has appeared in the form of Him whose name is the source of all love, and the fingers of the will of your Lord, that is the highest perception of compassion, that the bell does toll for, that rings out in the heaven of immortality in His name, who is the source of joy. Then the mighty verses of your Lord has again been sent down to you, so that you may rise to remember God, the Creator of earth and heaven, in these days when all the tribes of the earth have mourned, and the foundations of the cities have trembled, and the dust of faithlessness has enwrapped all men, except for the those that trust in God, that is the source of all the paths of knowledge, who was pleased to spare his loved ones from this day. Say, he who is the unconstrained has come, in the clouds of loving light, so that he may revive the dead world with the breezes of his names, the source of all mercy, and unite its people, and gather all men around this table that has been sent down from heaven. Beware that you do not deny the kindness of God after it has been sent down to you. This is better for you than what you possess, because what is yours perishes, while what is with God endures. He in truth commands what he is ordered by God. Truly, the breezes of forgiveness have been blowed from the direction of your Lord, who is the God of mercy, whosoever turns to there will be cleansed of his sins, and of all pain and sickness. Happy is the man that is turned towards there, and woe happens to him that is turned away. Were you to incline your inner ear to all created things, you would hear, the Ancient of Days has come in His great glory. Everything celebrates the praise of its Lord. Some have known God and remember Him, others remember Him, but you do not know Him at all. So we have set down our decree in a clear tablet. Give ear, O King, to the voice that calls from the fire that burns in this green tree, on this Sinai that has been raised above the hallowed and snow-white spot, beyond the everlasting city, truly, there is no other God but me, the ever-forgiving, and the most merciful. We in truth have sent Him, whom we aided with the Holy Spirit, so that He may announce to you this love that has shone forth from the horizon of the will of your Lord, that is the source of joy and compassion, and whose signs have been revealed in the West. Set your faces towards Him on this day that God has exalted above all other days, and whereon at the source of mercy has shed the splendor of His radiant joy on all who are in heaven and all who are on earth. You arise to serve God and help His perception. He truly will assist you with the hosts of the seen and unseen, and will set you king over all whereon at the sun rises. Your Lord, in truth, is the source of humble good desire. The breezes of the most merciful Holy Spirit has passed over all created things, happy is the man that has discovered her fragrance, and set himself towards them with a sound mind. Attire your temple with the ornament of my name, and your tongue with the memory of me, and your mind with love for me, who is the source of humble goodness, and compassion. We have desired for you nothing except what is better for you than what you now possess and all the treasures of the earth. 
Your Lord truly is the source of all knowledge and the mind of all. Arise in my name, among my assistants, and say, O you people of the earth! Turn yourselves towards him who has turned towards you. He truly is the face of God among you, and his testimony and his guide for you. He has come to you with signs that no one can produce. The voice of the burning bush is raised in the midmost mind of the world, and the Holy Spirit calls aloud among the nations, Lo, the desired one has come with seen dominion. O King! The stars of the heaven of knowledge has fell, for those who seek to establish the truth of my perception through the things that they possess, and who talks of God, in my name. But you do not, when I came to them in my glory, they turned away. They indeed, are of the fallen ones. This is truly what the Spirit of God has announced, when He came with truth to you, He with whom the Jewish doctors disputed, until at last they perpetrated what has made the Holy Spirit grieve, and caused the tears of them to fall that have nearest access to God and to His flow. Consider how a Pharisee, who had worshipped God for seventy years, yet rejected the Son when He appeared, but that one who had committed adultery gained admittance into the kingdom of God. Then the pen does admonish you as ordered by the Eternal King, so that you may be informed of what came to pass before time, and is being dealt with in this day among them that truly believe. Say, O congregation of monks! Do not seclude yourselves in your churches and masses. You come out of them by my will, and then busy yourselves with what will profit you and others. He commands you, who is the Lord of the day of judgment. Seclude yourselves in the stronghold of my love. This truly is the seclusion that benefits you, if you could only know it. He that secludes himself in his house is indeed as one dead. It benefits a man to show all people what will benefit mankind. He that brings forth no fruit is fit for the fire. Then you admonish your Lord, He truly is the mighty, and the generous. You enter into wedlock, so that after you another may arise in your place to worship God. We truly have seen you dealing in lustfulness, and not in what is constructive to faithfulness. You have clung to the promptings of your own nature, and turned your backs on the statutes and commandments of God? You fear disobeying God, and do not be of the foolish. If not for man, who on my earth would remember me, and how could my attributes and my names ever be revealed? Meditate on this and do not be of them that have shut themselves out as by a veil from Him, because you is of those that are fast asleep. He that does not marry the Holy Spirit cannot find no place to live, nor where to lay his head, by reason of what the hands of the treacherous have constructed. His holiness does not consist in the things that you have believed in or imagined, but instead in the things that belong to us. Ask us so that you may be made aware of his station that has been exalted above the vain imaginings of all the people of the earth. Blessed are they that understand. O King! We heard the words that you spoke in answer to the Tsar of Russia, concerning the decision made regarding the war. Your Lord truly knows and is informed of all. You did say, I laid asleep upon my couch when the cry of the oppressed, who were drowned in the Black Sea, woke me. This is what we heard you say, and truly your Lord is witness to what I say. We testify that what awakened you was not their cry, but the promptings of your own passions, because we tested you and found you selfishly desiring it to happen. Comprehend the meaning of my words, and you be of the discerning kind. It is not our wish to address your words of condemnation, but out of regard for the dignity that we conferred upon you in this mortal life. We truly have chosen courtesy and have made it the true mark of those that are near to God. Courtesy is in truth the garment that fits all men, whether young or old. It is well with him that adorns his temple with it, and woe to him who is deprived of this great reward. If you had been sincere in your words, you would not have turned your back on the book of God, when it was sent to you by him who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of all ways. We have proved to you through it, and found you other than what you have professed. Arise, and make amends for what escaped you. Before long the world and all that you possess will perish, and the kingdom will remain God's, who is your Lord and the Lord of your fathers of old. It does not benefit you to conduct your affairs according to the dictates of your desires. Fear the size of this wronged one, and shield him from the challenges of this type of unjust acts. For what you have done, your kingdom will be thrown into confusion, and your empire will pass from your hands, as a punishment for what you have constructed then you will know how much you have plainly erred. Commotions will seize all the people in that land, unless you arise to help this cause, and follow him who is the Spirit of God in this, that is the straight path. Your fame and joy has made you proud? By my life. It will not endure, no, it will soon pass away, 
unless you hold fast by this firm cord that leads to God. We see humiliation running after you, while you are part of those who are fast asleep. It benefits you when you listen to His voice calling from the seat of joy and to cast away all that you possess, and cry out, Here I am humbled before you, O Lord of all that is in heaven and all that is on earth. O King! We were in Iraq, when the hour of separating arrived. At the command of the King of Islam, we set our steps in His direction, and upon our arrival, what happened to us at the hands of the hostile people, that the books of the world can never adequately recount. Thereupon the inmates of paradise and they that live within the retreats of holiness grieved, but you do not know the amount of people that are wrapped in a thick veil. Say, do you complain at him who has come to you bearing the clear evidence of God and his proofs, that is the testimony of God and his signs? These things are not from himself, no, rather they proceed from the one who has been raised up, and sent forth from God through the good power of truth, that has made him to be a lamp to all mankind. More grievous became our predicament from day to day, no, from hour to hour, until they took us forth from our prison and made us, with glaring immoral incorrectness, enter the most great prison. And if anyone asked them, for what crime were they imprisoned? They would answer and say, they truly wanted to supersede the faith with a new religion. If what is ancient is what you prefer, where have you discarded what has been set down in the Torah and the Evangel? Clear it up, O men! By my life! there is no place for you to run to in this day. If this is my crime, then Muhammad, the Apostle of God, committed it before me, and before him, was he who also had the Spirit of God, and him that you do know of from earlier, that was he who conversed with God. And if my sin is this, that I have exalted the Word of God and revealed His perception, then indeed I am the greatest of sinners. Such a sin that is not a sin, I will bear for the kingdoms of earth and heaven. Upon our arrival at this prison, we purpose to transmit to the kings the messages of their Lord, that is the mighty, and the source of encouragement. Though we have transmitted to them, in several tablets, what we was commanded to, but you do not know but we are doing it once again as a token of God's grace. So that by perchance they may recognize the Lord, who has come down in the clouds with sovereign power. As my tribulations were multiplied, so did my love for God and for His perception that increased, in such a way that all that happened to me from those possessed by selfishness that was powerless to deter me from my purpose, and if they should hide me away in the depths of the earth, you do not know it but they would find me riding high on the clouds, and calling out to God, the Lord of good intelligence. I have offered myself up in the way of God, and I long for the tribulations in the path of my love for Him, and for the sake of His good will. To this He bears witness to and of the woes that now afflict me, the like of which no other man has ever suffered. Every single hair of my head calls out what the burning bush spoke of on Mount Sinai, and each vein of my body is invoked with what God has said, Oh if only you could have been separated in your path, so that the world's empathic perception be revived, and all its people be united. Then it has been decreed by Him who is the source of all knowledge and reason. You know of a truth, that your subjects are God's trust among you. Therefore, you watch over them as you watch over your own selves. Beware, so that you do not allow wolves to become the shepherds of the fold, or pride and conceit to deter you from turning to the poor and the desolate. Were you to drink the mystic wine of everlasting life from the chalice of the words of your Lord, that is the source of mercy, you would be enabled to forsake all that you possess and to proclaim my name before all mankind. Then you cleanse your soul with the waters of detachment. Truly, this is the memory that has shone forth above the horizon of creation, that will purge your soul from the impurities of the world. Abandon your palaces to the people of the graves, and your empire to whosoever desires it, and then turn to the kingdom of God. This truly is what God has chosen for you, if you were of them that turned to Him you would know it. Those that have failed to turn their faces to the countenance of God, in this revelation are indeed deprived of life. They move as ordered by their own selfish desires, and are in truth counted among the dead. Should you desire to bear the weight of your dominion, bear it then to aid the perception of your Lord. Joyful is this station that whosoever attains to there has attained to all good that proceeds from him who is the source of all the paths of knowledge. You rise in my name, above the horizon of self-denial, and then set your face towards the kingdom, and at the command of your Lord, the Lord of strength and of might. Through the power of my goodness stand before the inhabitants of the world and say, O people! The day has come, and the fragrances of God has been blowed over the whole world of creation. Yet, they that have turned away from His face are the helpless victims of their corrupt inclinations. 
and they are indeed of them that have gone astray. Adorn the body of your kingdom with the garments of my name, and then rise to teach my perception. This is better for you than all that you possess. Thereby this God will exalt your name among all of the kings. Potent is He over all things. You walk among men in the name of God, and by the good power of His love, so that you may show His signs amid the people of the earth. You burn bright with the flame of this undying fire that the source of mercy has ignited in the midmost mind of creation, so that through you the heat of His love may be lit within the minds of His kindest ones who follow in my way, and enrapture the minds of men through the memory of me, who is the source of humble compassion. Say, He from whom in this day the sweet affection of the memory of His Lord, that is the source of mercy, has been diffused, and is indeed unworthy of the station of man. He truly is of them that has followed their own desires, and will before long find himself in grievous loss. Does it not benefit you to relate yourselves to Him who is the God of mercy, so that you will not commit the things that the evil one has committed? No, by the perfect love of Him who is the source of all joy. If you could only know it. Purge your minds from the love of the world, and your tongues from slander, and your limbs from whatsoever may withhold you from humbling yourself to God so that you may begin a humble loving trusting relationship with Him, which is the universal relationship with all realities, the perceptions of God that are all one perception. Compassion, empathy, sympathy. He is the loving source of encouragement. Say, by the world is meant, what turns you away from Him who is the dawning place of revelation, so incline your ear to what is unprofitable for you. Truly, the thing that deters you from God in this day, is worldliness in its essence. Give it up, and approach the most loving vision, of this shining and splendid seat. Blessed is he who allows nothing whatsoever to come between him and his Lord. Assuredly, no harm can befall him if he partakes of moral correctness from the benefits of this heavenly world, in view of the fact that, we have created all things for this kind of assistance for us, that truly trusts in God and has faith in only Him. O people, if your words do not agree with your deeds, then what will distinguish you from those who profess their faith in the Lord their God, and when He came down to them overshadowed with clouds, you rejected Him and became proud before God, that is the source of all experiential knowledge. You do not shed the blood of anyone, O people, neither judge anyone unjustly. This you have been commanded by Him who knows, and who is informed of all. They that commit chaos in the land after it has been well ordered, these indeed have overstepped the bounds that have been set in the book of God. Miserable will be the home of the transgressors. God has prescribed to everyone the duty of teaching his perception. Whoever rises to discharge this duty, before he proclaims his message, needs to adorn himself with the ornament of righteousness and be praiseworthy in your character, so that your words may attract the minds of those that are receptive to his call. Without you to help him, he can never hope to influence these minds. Then God will be able to instruct you. He truly is the best at forgiving, and the most compassionate. They who encourage others to righteousness, while they themselves are committing sinfulness, stands accused of being false by the inmates of the kingdom of God and by those who circle around the throne of their Lord, that is the source of humble goodness and the beneficent, because of what their tongues have spoke. O people, do not commit what dishonors your name, and the fair name of the perception of God among men. Beware unless you approach what your minds hates. Fear displeasing God, and do not follow in the footsteps of them that have gone astray. Do not deal dishonestly with the substance of your neighbor. You be trustworthy while you are on earth, and do not withhold from the poor the things that have been given to you by God through His grace. He truly will bestow on you a double of what you possess. He in truth, is the source of kindness, and the most generous. Say, we have commanded that our perception be advanced through the power of good humble speech. But beware unless you dispute idly with anyone. Whosoever rises completely for the sake of his Lord, to teach his perception, and about the Holy Spirit, he will strengthen him and inspire him with what will illuminate my perception in the mind of the world, how much more will the Holy Spirit strengthen and assist the minds of those who seek her. O people of Baha! Subdue the strongholds of men's minds with the swords of wisdom and humble kind speech. They that dispute, as prompted by their desires, are indeed wrapped in a visible veil. Say, the sword of wisdom is hotter than the summer heat, and sharper than the blades of steel, if only you could understand. Draw the sword of your mind in my name and through the good power of my empathic perception, then conquer them with it, in the cities of the minds of them that have secluded themselves in the stronghold of their corrupt desires. Then you direct the pen of the source of joy towards them, 
while they are seated beneath the swords of the wayward. If you become aware of a sin committed by another, conceal it, so that God may conceal your own sin. He truly is the concealer, and the Lord of grace abounding. O you rich ones on earth! If you encounter one who is poor, do not treat him arrogantly. Reflect on what you was created for, because every one of you was created from a sorry germ. It benefits you to observe truthfulness, whereby at your temples will be adorned, your names uplifted, your stations exalted amid men, and a mighty reward assured for you before God. O people of the earth, give ear to what the pen of the Lord of all nations commands of you. You know of a certainty that the dispensations of the past has attained their highest, and their final perfection in the law that has branched out from this most great ocean. Have you drink from there at our instructions? We truly command as we please. You regard the world as a man's body, that is afflicted with various ailments, and the recovery of this disease depends on the harmonizing of all of its component elements. You gather around what we have prescribed to you, and do not walk in the ways of those that create disagreements. All feasts have attained their perfection in the two most great festivals, and in two other festivals that fall on the twin days, the first of the most great festivals being those days on where God shine the bright joy of His kind and loving names on all who are in heaven and on earth, and the second day being the day on which we raised up the one who announced to the people the glad tidings of this great announcement. Then it has been set down in the book of God by Him who is the humble King of kings, and the most good. On other than these four consummate days, you do engage in your daily occupations, and withhold not yourselves from the pursuit of your trades and crafts. Then the command has been issued and the law gone forth from Him who is your Lord, that is the source of all the paths of knowledge. Say, O congregation of priests and monks! You eat of what God has made lawful to you and do not refuse meat. God has as a token of His grace granted to you, and you have permission to partake of it, except during a brief period of fasting. He truly is the mighty, and the beneficent. Forsake all that you possess and hold fast to what God has purposed. This is what profits you, if you are of them that can comprehend. We have commanded a fast of nineteen days in the most temperate of the seasons, and have in this splendid and luminous dispensation relieved you from more than this. We have set forth and made clear to you what you are ordered to observe, so that you may follow the commandments of God and be united in what the source of humble goodness, and the source of all ways, has appointed to you. He who is your Lord, that is the source of mercy, cherishes in his mind the desire of seeing the entire human race as one soul and one body. You have to earn your share of God's good grace and mercy in this day, so that it eclipses all other created days. How great the happiness that awaits the man who forsakes all he has in the desire to obtain the things of God. We testify that such a man is among God's blessed ones. O King! You bear witness to what God has done Himself, and for Himself, that has been witnessed before the creation of earth and heaven, so that they would know that there is no other God but Me, the One, the Single, and the Highest Perception, that is the source of knowledge and intelligence. Rise with the utmost steadfastness in the perception of your Lord, who is the source of joy, that you have been instructed in, that is in this wondrous tablet, and see that we truly have desired nothing for you except what is better for you than all that is on earth, and to this testifies all created things and beyond them, that is in this clear book. Meditate on the world and the state of its people, and on him for whose sake the world was called into being, that has been imprisoned in the most desolate of cities, by reason of what the hands of the wayward has constructed. From the horizon of his prison city he summoned mankind to the perfection of God, who is the exalted and the great. You are exalted above the treasures that you possess, because you know they will perish. You rejoice in that you have a large span of earth, when in the whole world, in the estimation of the people of Baha, is worth as much as the black in the eye of a dead ant. Abandon it to those that have set their affections on it, and you turn to him who is the desire of the world. Where have they all gone, the proud in their palaces? You look into their tombs, so that you may profit by this example, in view of the fact that we have made it a lesson to everyone with spiritual insight. Were the breezes of revelation to seize you, you would run from the world, and turn to the kingdom of God, and would give away all that you possess, so that you may draw near to this loving vision. We see the general population of mankind worshipping names and exposing themselves, as you do witness, to dear perils in the hope of perpetuating their own names, while every perceiving soul testifies that after death, one's name will avail him nothing except that it bears a relationship to God, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of encouragement. Then their vain imaginings have taken hold of them in return for what their hands have constructed. 
consider the pettiness of men's minds. They seek with utmost exertion what does not profit them, and were you to ask them, is there any advantage in what you desire? You would find them sorely confused. Were a fair-minded soul to be found, he would reply, no, by the Lord of the worlds. This is the condition of the people and of what they possess. Leave them in their foolishness and turn your sight to God. This is in truth what benefits you. Then listen to the counsel of your Lord, and say, Praised are you, O God of all who are in heaven and on earth. Tsar Alexander II. O Tsar of Russia. Incline your ear to the voice of God, that is the King and the Holy Spirit, and you turn to paradise, the spot wherein it he lives, who is among the congregation of angels on high, that bears the most excellent titles, and who in the kingdom of creation is called by the name of God, that is the radiant, and the source of all joy. You wear unless your desire deters you from turning towards the face of your Lord, the compassionate, and the most merciful. We truly have heard the thing that you did ask humbly of your Lord, while secretly communicating with Him. Wherefore, the breeze of my loving kindness blowed, and the sea of my mercy surged, and we answered you in truth. Your Lord truly is the source of all the paths of knowledge. While I lay chained and shackled in this prison, one of your ministers extended me his aid. Wherefore God has commanded for you a station that the knowledge of no one can comprehend except his knowledge. You wear unless you throw away this loving station. Your Lord truly does what is God wills, and God will confirm this, and with him is the knowledge of all things in a guarded tablet. You wear unless your powerful intellect withholds you from him who is the supreme goodness of God. He truly has come with his kingdom, and all the atoms cry aloud, Lo! The Lord has come in his great love. He who is the Father has come, and the Son in the holy valley cries out, Here I am, here I am, O Lord, my God. While Sinai circles around the house, and the burning bush calls aloud, the source of kindness has come mounted on the clouds of the mind. Blessed is he that draws near to him, and woe happens to them that are far away. You rise among men in the name of this irrefutable perception of God, and then summon the nations to God, that is the good, and the loving. You do not be of them who called on God by one of His names, but when He who is the object of all names appeared, they denied Him and turned away from Him, and in the end, pronounced sentence against Him with immoral incorrectness. You consider and call to mind the days whereon it the Spirit of God appeared, and Herod gave judgment against Him. However, God aided Him with the hosts of the unseen, and protected Him with truth, and sent Him down to another land, according to His promise. He truly commands what pleases God. Your Lord truly preserves whom He wills, rather He is in the midst of the seas, or in the mouth of the serpent, or beneath the sword of the oppressor. Blessed is the King whom the veils of beauty have not deterred Him from turning to the perfection of God and who has forsaken His all in His desire to obtain the things of God. He indeed is counted in the sight of God as the most excellent of men, and is praised by the people of Paradise and them that circle morning and evening around the throne on high. Again, I say, Listen to my voice that calls from my prison, so that it may acquaint you with the things that has caused my perfection, at the hands of them that are the peaceful safety of my perception, and so that you may perceive how great my patience has been, notwithstanding my kindness, and how immense my tolerance, and notwithstanding my good will. By my life. Could you only know the things sent down by my pen, and discover the treasures of my perception? and the pearls of my ideas that are hid in the seas of my names and in the cups of my words, you in your love for my name, and in your longing for my joyful and loving kingdom, you would lay down your life in my path. You know that though my body is beneath the swords of my enemies, and my limbs are plagued with incalculable afflictions, yet you do not know how my spirit is filled with a gladness that all of the pleasures of the earth can never compare to. Set your mind toward him who is the point of adoration for the world, and say, O people of the earth! Have you denied the one in whose path, he came with the truth bearing the announcement of your Lord, that is the exalted, and the great, who suffered martyrdom? Say, this is an announcement where the minds of the prophets and messengers have rejoiced. This is the one whom the mind of the world remembers, and who is promised in the books of God, that is the mighty, and the source of all ways. The hands of the messengers of paradise desired to meet me, so I was raised up towards God, that is the loving source of joy. To this testifies what has been sent down in the sacred scriptures by him who is the Lord of compassion and power. Some did grieve in their separation from me, others endured hardships in my path, and still others laid down their lives for the sake of my perfect love, if you could only know it. Say, I truly have not wanted to praise my own self, 
but rather to praise God Himself, were you to judge fairly. Nothing can be seen in me except God and His perception, if you could only perceive it. I am the one whom the tongue of Isaiah has praised, the one with whose name both the Torah and the Evangel were adorned. Then it has been decreed in the Scriptures of your Lord, the Most Merciful. He truly has borne witness to me, as I bear witness to Him. And God testifies to the truth of my words. Say, the books have been sent down for nothing but my remembrance. Whosoever is receptive to their call will perceive from there the sweet fragrances of my name and my praise, and he who has unstopped his ear of his inmost mind, that will hear every word from thereof, the true one has come. He indeed is the beloved of the worlds. It is for the sake of God alone that my tongue counsels you and that my pen moves to make mention of you, because neither can the hostility and denial of all who live on earth harm me, nor the allegiance of the entire creation profit me. We truly encourage you to what we are commanded, and desire nothing from you except that you draw near to God, and what will profit you in both this world and the world to come. Say, will you kill him who summons you to everlasting life? You fear disobeying God, and follow not every stubborn oppressor. O oh, proud ones of the earth! Do you believe yourselves worthy to be living in palaces while he who is the king of revelation lives in the most desolate of homes? No, by my life. You live in tombs, if only you could perceive it. Truly he who afflicts in these days, is going to be stirred by the breeze of God and is counted among the dead in the sight of him who is the Lord of all names and attributes. Then arise from the tombs of self and desire and turn to the kingdom of God, who is the possessor of the throne on high and of earth below so that you may see what you were promised before time by your Lord, that is the source of knowledge. Do you think that the things you possess will profit you? Soon others will possess them and you will return to the dust with no one to help or comfort you. What advantage is there in a life that can be overtaken by death, or in an existence that is doomed to extinction, or in a prosperity that is constantly subject to change, or an individual perception that only brings temporary pleasure that will never satisfy your true desire for God and His goodness? Cast away the things that you possess and set your faces toward the kindness of God that has been sent down in this wondrous name. Then the pen of the compassionate does warble to you its melodies by the leaves of your Lord, who is the source of all joy. When you have heard and recited them, say, Praise be to you, O Lord of all the worlds, in view of the fact that as you have made mention of me through the tongue of him who is the peace and safety of yourself at a time when he was confined in the most great prison so that the whole world's perception might attain to true liberty. Blessed is the king whose goodness has not been withheld from him, from the goodness of his Lord, and who has turned to God with his whole mind and heart. He truly is counted among those that have attained to what God, the mighty, and the source of all ways, has willed for him. Before long such a one will find himself numbered with the monarchs of the realms of the kingdom. Your Lord in truth, is potent over all things. He gives what God wills to whomsoever, and he withholds from whomsoever what is ordered by what pleases God. He truly is the source of will, and the source of humble goodness. Queen Victoria. O Queen in London. Incline your ear to the voice of your Lord, the Lord of all mankind, calling from the divine lo tree, truly, no God is there but me, the source of humble goodness, and the source of all ways. Cast away all that is on earth, and attire the head of your kingdom with the crown of the memory of your Lord, the source of all joy. He in truth has come to the world in His most great glory, and all that has been mentioned in the Gospel has been fulfilled. The land of Syria has been honoured by the footsteps of its Lord, who is the Lord of all men, and of north and south that are both inebriated with the wine of His presence. Blessed is the man that has inhaled the fragrance of the most merciful, and turned to the dawning place of His perfection, in this splendid dawn. The mosque of Aksa vibrates through the breezes of its Lord, the source of joy, while Bada trembles at the voice of God, the perception of compassion. Whereon every single stone of them celebrates the praise of the Lord, through this great name. Put away your desire, and then set your mind towards your Lord, who is the Ancient of Days. We make mention of you for the sake of God, and desire that your name may be exalted through your memory of God, the Creator of earth and heaven. He truly is a witness to what I say. We have been informed that you have been dealing in the trading of slaves, both men and women. This truly is not what God has encouraged in this wondrous revelation. God has truly destined a reward for you, because of this. He truly will pay the doer of good his due recompense, unless you were to follow what has been sent to you by him who is the source of knowledge and reason. As to him who turns away and swells with pride, 
after the clear tokens have come to him from the revealer of signs, his work God will bring to nothing. He in truth as good will over all things, but man's actions are only acceptable after he has recognized the peace and safety of the Lord. He that turns away from the true one is indeed the most veiled among his seekers. Then it has been decreed by him who is the source of humble goodness, and the highest will. We have also heard that you have trusted the controls of counsel to the hands of the representatives of the people. You indeed have done well, because by there the foundations of the building of your affairs will be strengthened, and the minds of all that are beneath your shadow, whether high or low, will be tranquilized. It benefits them to be trustworthy as you are among his assistants, and to regard themselves as the representatives of all that live on earth. This is what counsels them in this tablet, and assists he who is the ruler, and the source of all ways. And if any one of them directs himself towards the assembly, let him turn his eyes to the supreme horizon, and say, O oh my God! I ask you, by your good name, to aid me in what will cause the affairs of your assistants to prosper, and your cities to flourish. You indeed, have good will for all things. Blessed is he that enters the assembly for the sake of God, and judges fairly between men with pure moral correctness. He indeed is of the blissful kind. O oh, you the elected representatives of the people in every land! You take counsel together, and let your concern be only for what profits mankind and betters the condition of it, if you are of them that can listen fully. Regard the world as the human body, so that at its creation it will be whole and perfect, though it has been afflicted through various causes, with grave disorders and diseases. Not for one day did it gain ease, no its sickness became more severe, as it fell under the treatment of ignorant physicians, who gave full control to their personal desires and have erred grievously. And if at one time through the care of an able physician, a member of that body was healed, but the rest remained afflicted as before. So pray and you inform the source of knowledge, and God, the source of intelligence. We see in this day that the mercy of rulers that are so drunk with pride that they cannot discern clearly their own best advantage, much less recognize a revelation so bewildering and challenging as this. And whenever any one of them has worked hard to improve their condition, his motive has been for his own gain, whether confessedly so or not, and the unworthiness of this motive has limited his good will to heal or cure. What the Lord has commanded is the remedy through goodness and the mightiest instrument for the healing of all the world is the union of all its people in one universal perception, and one common universal relationship between all people and God. This truly is the truth, and all else is nothing but selfishness. Each time that loving intelligent instrument has come, and that love shined from he who is the ancient perfection, he was withheld by ignorant physicians, who even as clouds placed themselves between him and the world. Therefore, the world failed to recover and its sickness has persisted until this day. They indeed were powerless to protect the world or to effect a cure, while he who has been the peaceful sanctuary of good will among men, but was withheld from achieving his purpose, by reason of what the hands of the ignorant physicians have constructed. Consider these days in which he who is the ancient good one has come in his loving name, so that he may quicken the world and unite its people. However, they rose up against him with sharpened swords, and committed what caused the faithful spirit to be grieved, until in the end they imprisoned him in the most desolate of cities, and broke the bondage of the faithful upon the hem of his robe. If anyone were to tell them, the world reformer has come, they would answer and say, indeed it is proven that he is an agitator of conflict. And this notwithstanding that they have never associated with him, and yet they have not perceived that he did not seek for one moment, to protect himself. At all times he was at the mercy of the wicked doers. At one time they cast him into prison, at another they banished him, and as you do not know, at another time they hurried him from land to land. So they have pronounced judgment against us, and God truly is aware of what I say. Such men are judged by God, and was labeled among the most ignorant of his seekers. They cut off their own limbs and perceive it not, and they deprive themselves of what is best for them and know it not. They are even as a young child who cannot distinguish between neither the mischief-maker from the peacemaker, nor the wicked from the righteous. We see them in this day wrapped in a visible veil. O oh, you rulers of the earth! Why and for what have you clouded the radiance of the sun, and caused it to cease from shining? Listen to the counsel given to you by the pen of the compassionate one, so that happily both you and the poor may attain to trust, safety, and peace. We pray to God to assist the kings and rulers of the earth to establish peace on earth. But He truly does what He wills. O oh, kings of the earth! We see you increasing everything that you are doing, 
and how you are giving away expenditures, and laying the burden of this on your subjects. This truly is completely and grossly unjust. Fear the sighs and tears of these wronged ones, and do not lay excessive burdens on your people. Do not rob them to build palaces for yourselves, no rather, choose for them what you choose for yourselves. Then we will unfold to your eyes what profits you, if you only can perceive it. Your people are your treasures. You wear unless your rule violates the commandments of God, and you deliver your districts to the hands of the robber. By them you rule, by their means you survive, and by their aid you conquer. Whatsoever you do, do not look arrogantly at them. How strange, how very strange! Now that you have refused this most great peace, you hold fast to this lesson, if there is less peace in your kingdom the subjects will feel unsafe and no one will have peace and no one will be able to find happiness. But when safety has been returned, then everyone will feel safe and happy and you may in some degree better your own condition and that of your subjects. This is also true within the family. If the parents create a peaceful and safe environment for themselves and their children, there will be peace and happiness within the family, but God has to be the foundation that all of it is built on. O rulers of the earth! Be reconciled among yourselves, so that you may need no more armaments except in a measure to safeguard your territories and dominions. You wear unless you disregard the counsel of the source of knowledge, and the faithful. Be united O kings of the earth, because by this the temptation of conflict will be stilled among you, and your people will find rest, if you are of them that comprehend. Should any one among you take up arms against another, you all rise up against him, because this is nothing but moral correctness. Then we did encourage you in the tablet that was sent down before time, and we admonished you once again to follow what has been revealed by him who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of all ways. Should anyone seek shelter with you, extend to him your protection and do not betray him. Then the pen of the compassionate does counsel you, as ordered by him who is the source of knowledge and reason. Beware unless you act as the king of Islam did, when we came to him at his command. His ministers pronounced judgment against us with such immoral incorrectness that all creation grieved, and the minds of those who are near to God were consumed. The winds of selfishness and passion moved them as they willed, and we found them all deprived of constancy. They are all indeed of those that have went far astray. Restrain your pen, O pen of the Ancient of Days, and leave them to themselves, because they are immersed in their idle fantasies. You make mention of the Queen, so that she may turn with a pure mind to the scene of empathic glory, so that she may not withhold her eyes from gazing toward her Lord, the Supreme Commander, and so that she may become acquainted with what has been revealed in the books and tablets by the Creator of all mankind, that is He, through whom the sun has been darkened and the moon eclipsed, and through whom the call has been raised between earth and heaven. You turn to God and say, O oh my goodness Lord! I am only an assistant of Yourself, and You are in truth, the King of Kings. I have lifted my pleading hands to the heaven of your grace and your bounties. Then send down on me from the clouds of your generosity what will rid me of all except you, and draw me near to yourself. I beg you, O my Lord, by your name that you have made the King of names and the peace and safety of yourself to all who are in heaven and on earth, to rip apart the veils that have come between me and my recognition of the dawning place of your signs and the perfection of your revelations. You are truly the source of humble goodness, the source of will, and the source of kindness. Deprive me not, O my Lord, of the fragrances of the robe of your mercy in your days, and send down for me what you have sent down for your handmaidens who have trusted in you and in your signs, and have recognized you, and set their minds of their old dead selves towards the horizon of your perception. You are truly the Lord of the worlds and of those who show mercy, that are the most merciful. Then assist me to remember you, O my God, among your handmaidens and to aid your perception in your lands. Then accept what has escaped me, when your love and kindness shines forth. You indeed have power over all things. Joy be to you, O you in whose hand is the kingdom of the heavens and of the earth. O King of the earth! Listen to the call of this assistant. Say, truly I am an assistant who has trusted in God and in His signs, and have sacrificed myself in His path. To this bear witness to the woes that now plague me, woes the like of which no man has ever before sustained. My Lord, the source of all knowledge, testifies to the truth of my words. I have summoned the people to no one except God, your Lord and the Lord of the worlds, and have endured for the love of God such afflictions as the eye of creation has never saw before. To this testifies those whom the veils of human fantasy has not deterred them from turning to the loving vision and beyond, 
he with whom is the knowledge of all things is in the preserved tablet. Whenever the clouds of tribulation have rained down the challenges of suffering in the path of God, who is the Lord of all names, I have ran to meet them, as every fair-minded and discerning soul will attest to. How many of the ones near to their Lord have been found with the beasts of the field resting in their lairs, and with the birds of the air lying in their nests, all this while you do nothing, but your Lord is weakened in chains and shackles with no one to aid or comfort Him. You call to mind God's mercy to you, how when you were imprisoned with a number of other souls, He delivered you and aided you with the hosts of the seen and the unseen, until the King sent you to Iraq after we had disclosed to Him that you were not of the sowers of disobedience. Those who follow their corrupt desires and refuse to feel the fear of disobeying God are indeed in grievous error. They that spread disorder in the land, that shed the blood of men, and wrongfully consume the substance of others, we are truly finished with them, and we beg God not to associate us with them any more, whether in this world or in the world to come, unless they repent to Him and change. He truly is of those who show mercy to the most merciful. Whosoever turns to God, must distinguish himself from others by his every act and speech, and follow what has been encouraged on him in the Book of God, so it has been decreed in a lucid tablet. However, those who cast behind their backs the commandments of God, and follow the prompting of their own desires, are truly in grievous error. O King! I plead with you and advise you by your Lord, that is the source of mercy, to look upon your spiritual assistance with the eye of your kindness, and to treat them with moral correctness, so that God may treat you with mercy. Potent is your Lord to do as God wills. The world with all its humiliation and joy will pass away, but the kingdom will remain God's, that is the highest perception, and the source of knowledge. Say, He has kindled the lamp of speech, and feeds it with the oil of wisdom and understanding. Your Lord and God, the source of mercy, is too powerful for anything in the universe to resist His faith. He reveals what pleases God through the good will of His goodness, and protects it with a host of His well-loved angels. He is supreme over His assistance and exercises undisputed dominion over His creation. He truly is the source of all the paths of knowledge. O King! I was only a man like others, asleep on my couch, when lo, the breezes of the Holy Spirit, the source of joy, was blowed over me and taught me the knowledge of all that has been. This is not from me, but from the one God, who is the source of humble goodness and knowledge. He urged me to lift up my voice between earth and heaven and because of what happened to me, that has caused the tears of every man of understanding to flow. The accepted learning among men I did not study, and their schools I did not enter. Ask of the city where I was restrained and where I lived, so that you may be well assured that I am not of them who speak falsely. This is only a leaf that the winds of the will of your Lord, that is the source of humble goodness and the source of encouragement, has stirred. Can he be still when the tempestuous winds are blowing? No by Him who is the Lord of all names and attributes. They move it as they list it. The vanishing is as nothing before Him, who is the forever living. His irresistible summons has reached me, and has caused me to speak His praise amid all people. I was indeed as one dead when His instructions was spoke to me. The hand of the will of your Lord, who is the compassionate and the merciful, transformed me. Can anyone speak without divine help of what all men, both high and low, will protest against? No, by him who taught the pen of the eternal mysteries, and to get him to accept and welcome him whom the grace of the source of humble goodness, and God, the source of will is strengthened. The pen of the compassionate addressed me, saying, Fear not God and relate to His Majesty the Shah, what happened to you? His mind truly is between the fingers of your Lord, that is the God of mercy, so that happily the sun of moral correctness and rewards may shine forth above the horizon of His mind. Then the decree has been sent down by him who is God, the source of all ways. O King, look on this youth with the eyes of justice, so that you do nothing unless it is with the eyes of moral correctness, then you will judge with truth concerning what has happened to him. Of a truth, God has made you his shadow among men, and a sign of his good will to all that live on earth. You judge between us and them that have wronged us, but you do not have any external proof and you do not have an enlightening book of God. So they that surround you, love you for their own sakes, and say, this is what you do, nothing but love you for your own sake, and yet your Lord has had no desire except to draw you near to the seat of grace, and to turn you toward the right hand of moral correctness. Your Lord bears witness to what I declare. O King! Were you to incline your ear to the shrill of the pen of joy and to the cooing of the dove of eternity, 
that is on the branches of the lote tree beyond which there is no passing, singing, or speaking praises to God, the Maker of all names and Creator of earth and heaven, you could attain to a station from which you would see in the world of being and nothing except the brightness of the adored One, and would regard your exaltation as the most contemptible of your possessions, abandoning it to whosoever might desire it, and setting your face toward the horizon glowing with His loving kindness. Neither would you ever be willing to bear the burden of dominion except for the purpose of helping your Lord, the highest perception that is compassion. Then the congregation on high would bless you. Oh how excellent this empathic perception of love is, you could ascend to there through humble good desire, recognized as derived from the name of God. Among the people are those who allege that this youth has done nothing that has had any real purpose except to perpetuate my name, while others claim that I have wanted for myself the vanities of the world this notwithstanding that never throughout all of my days have I found a place of safety, even to the extent of a single foothold. At all times I have been immersed in an ocean of tribulations, whose full measure no one can comprehend but God. He truly is aware of what I say. How many are the days that my loved ones have been sorely shaken by reason of my afflictions, and how many are the near deaths that I have had during which my family, fearing for my life, has bitterly wept and grieved over me. And this, no one can deny, except them that are deprived of truthfulness. Is it conceivable, that he who expects to lose his life at any moment, should seek after worldly vanities? How very strange the imaginings of those who speak as prompted by their own unpredictable desires, and who wander distracted in the wilderness of selfish passions. Before long they will be called upon to account for their words and actions, and on that day they will find no one to be an assistant or to help them and among the people are those who claim that I have disbelieved in God, you do know that every member of my body testifies that there is no other God but Him, that those whom He has raised up in truth and sent forth with His guidance are the peaceful safety of His loving and kind names, and the revealers of His good attributes, and the repositories of His revelation in the kingdom of creation, and through them the proof of God has been perfected to all else but Him, the standard of divine unity has been raised, and the sign of sanctity has been made seen and through them every soul has found a path to the Lord of the throne on high. We testify that there is no other God but Him, and that from everlasting He was alone with no one else besides Him, and that He will be to everlasting what He has forever been. Too high, is the source of mercy for the minds of those who have recognized Him, to apprehend His true nature, or for the minds of men to hope to comprehend His essence. He truly is exalted above the understanding of anyone besides Himself, and is sanctified beyond the comprehension of all else except God. From all eternity He has been independent of the entire creation. Remember the days in which the sun of Bata shined forth above the horizon of the will of your Lord, the exalted, and the compassionate, and recall how the divines of that age turned away from Him, and the learned debated with Him, so that happily you may apprehend, what in this day remains concealed behind the veils of glory. So grievous became his predicament on every side that he instructed his companions to disperse. Then the decree was sent down from the heaven of divine glory. Furthermore, remember how when one of these same companions came before the king of Ethiopia and recited to him a suri or verse of the Quran, he declared to his attendants, This truly has been revealed by one God, who is source of all the paths of knowledge. Whosoever acknowledges the truth, and trusts in the teachings of Christ, can in no way deny what has been recited. We truly bear witness to its truth, even as we bear witness to the truth of what we possess of the books of God, who is the help in peril, and the source of life and honesty. I swear by God, O King! Were you to incline your ear to the melodies of that nightingale that warbles in manifold accents upon the mystic branch as ordered by your Lord, the source of mercy, you would cast away your earthly power and set your face towards this scene of empathic joy that is the station above whose horizon that shines on the book of the downhearted, and you would give away all that you possess in your eagerness to obtain the things of God. Then you would find yourself raised up to the summit of goodness and joy, and elevated to the pinnacle of love and freedom from selfishness, which is death of the humble universal relationship through God. So the decree has been recorded in the mother book by the pen of the God, the source of mercy. What benefit is there in the things that are yours today, and that tomorrow others will possess? Choose for yourself what God has chosen for His elect, and God will grant you the ability to perceive and give loving goodness in His kingdom. We beg God to aid your love and to listen to that word whose radiance has enveloped the whole world, to protect you from those that have strayed out far from the court of His presence. Glory be to you, O Lord my God! 
how many are the heads that were raised up often on spears in your path, and how many are the hearts that was made the target of arrows for the sake of your good will? How many are the minds that have been lacerated for the goodness of your word and the promotion of your perception, and how many are the eyes that we have made sore for the love of you? I implore you, O you, who is the King of kings and the compassion to the downhearted, by your most great name that you have made the dawning place of your thoughtful and loving names and the perfection of your good attributes, to remove the veils that have come in between you and your seekers and has blocked them from turning to the horizon of your revelation. Then, O my God, by your compassionate word, cause them to turn from the left hand of oblivion and delusion, to the right hand of knowledge of your goodness and trust through you, so that they may know what you have purposed for them through your rewards and grace, and so that they may set their faces towards Him who is your perception of trust and the revealer of your signs. O my God! You are the source of kindness, whose grace is infinite. Withhold not your assistance from this most mighty ocean, that you have made the repository of the pearls of your knowledge and your wisdom, and turn them not away from your gate, that you have opened wide before all who are in your heaven and all who are on your earth. O Lord! Leave them not to themselves, because they do not understand and run from what is best for them, that is better than all that you have created on your earth. O my God, cast on them the glances of the eye of your kindness and rewards, and deliver them from their selfishness and passions, so that they may draw near to your most exalted horizon, and taste the sweetness of your remembrance, and delight in the bread that you have sent down from the heaven of your will and the firmament of your grace. From everlasting your rewards have embraced the entire creation and your mercy has surpassed all things. No God is there but you, the ever-forgiving, and the most compassionate. You are the source of joy, O Lord my God. You well know that my mind has melted in your perception, and that my blood boils in my veins with the fire of your love, so that every drop of it proclaims with its inner tongue, I grant that it may be spilled all over the ground for your sake, O my Lord, the compassionate, so that from there it may spring forth what you have purposed in your tablets and have hidden from the eyes of all except for your assistance that has tasted of the crystal stream of knowledge from the hands of your grace and drink the soft flowing waters of understanding from the cup of your generous gifts. You know, O oh my God, that in all my affairs I have only wanted to obey your command, so that in my every speech I have wished only to praise you, and that in whatsoever has proceeded from my pen, I have purposed only to win for your humble goodness and to reveal what you have encouraged on me through your sovereign good will. You see me, O oh my God, as one confused in your land. Whenever I speak of what you have encouraged me to do, your seekers complain at me, but you do not want me to neglect what you have ordered me to observe, if so I would deserve the scourge of your anger and would be far removed from the meadows of your nearness. No, by your glory. I have set my face towards your good will, and I have turned away from the things that your assistants have set their affections on. I have embraced all that is with you, and have forsaken all that earthly might and earthly glory lead me away from the retreats of your nearness and the heights of your joy. I swear by your might. With your love in my mind and heart nothing can ever alarm me, and in the path of your goodwill all the world's afflictions can in no way deter me. However, all of this proceeds from your goodwill and your might, and from your rewards and your grace, and is not of my own goodwill or because I deserve anything. O oh my God, this is an epistle that I have purposed to send to the King for a while. You know that I have wished of him nothing but that he should show good moral correctness to your assistance and extend his kindness to the people of your kingdom. Because I myself have desired only what you desire, and through your comfort I wish for nothing except what you wish for. Perish the soul that seeks from you anything except yourself. I swear by your glory. Your good will is my dearest wish, and your purpose is my highest hope. Have mercy, O oh my God, on this poor creature who has clung to the hem of your riches and on this pleading soul who calls on you, saying, You are truly the Lord of empathy, intelligence, and joy. You assist, O oh my God, His Majesty the Shah to keep your statutes amid your assistance and to see your moral correctness among your seekers, so that He may treat this people as He treats others. You are in truth the God of good will, of glory, and of wisdom. By the will and permission of the King of the Age, this assistant journeyed from the seat of goodness to Iraq, and lived there for twelve years in that land. Throughout the entire course of this period, no account of our condition was submitted to the court of your presence, and no representation was ever made to foreign powers. Placing our whole trust in God, we resided in that land until there came to Iraq a certain official, who upon his arrival undertook to harass this poor company of exiles. Day after day, at the instigation of some of the outwardly learned and of other individuals, 
he would stir up trouble for these assistants, although they had at no time committed any act detrimental to the state and its people, nor did anything contrary to the rules and customs of the citizens of the realm. Fearing that if the actions of these transgressors should produce some outcome at variance with your world adorning judgment, this assistant dispatched a brief account of the matter to Mirza Said Khan at the foreign ministry, so that he might submit it to your royal presence and whatever should please you to decree in this respect will be obeyed. A long while elapsed, and no decree was issued. Finally, matters came to such a pass that there loomed the threat of imminent strife and bloodshed. Therefore, of necessity and for the protection of the assistance of God, a few of them appealed to the governor of Iraq. Were you to observe these events with the eye of fairness, it would become clear and evident in the luminous mirror of your mind that what occurred was called for by circumstances, and that no other alternative could be seen. His Majesty himself is witness to that in whatever city a number of this people has lived in, the hostility of certain officials have kindled the flame of conflict and contention. However, this vanishing soul, since his arrival in Iraq, has been dealing with all who engage in disagreement and strife. The witness of this assistant is his very deeds, because all are well aware and will testify, that although a greater number of this people resided in Iraq than in any other land, no one overstepped his limits or transgressed against his neighbor. Fixing their gaze on God, and returning their trust in Him, all have now been living in peace for well near fifteen years, and in whatever has befallen them, they have shown patience and resigned themselves to God. If the peace of God can be found in a prison, there is no reason that the peace of God cannot be found anywhere in the world, if one desires it enough. After the arrival of this assistant in the city of Adrianople, some of the people of Iraq and elsewhere inquired about the meaning of the term giving assistance to God that has been mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. So eventually answers were sent out in reply, one of which is set forth in these pages, so that it may be clearly demonstrated in the court of your presence, that this assistant has had no end in view but to promote the betterment and well-being of the world. And if some of the divine favors, undeserving as I may be, God is pleased to bestow on me is not plain and seen, this much at least will be clear and apparent, that He, in His surpassing mercy and infinite grace, has not deprived my mind of the ornament of reason. The passage that was referred to concerning the meaning of giving assistance to God is as follows, He is God, and exalted is His glory. It is clear and evident that the one true God, joyful is His mention, is sanctified above the world and all that is in it. By giving assistance to God, it is not meant that any soul should fight or debate with another. That ascended Lord who does whatsoever God pleases, that has been entrusted with the kingdom of creation, its lands and its seas, yet the Lord has entrusted it all into the hands of the kings, because they are each, according to the level of their individual perceptions, creating the environments of distrust, unrest, and war, or the environments of peace, trust, and safety of His divine good will. Should they enter beneath the shadow of the True One, they will be counted of God, and if not, your Lord truly knows and observes all things. God is joyful by His name. And what He has desired for Himself is the minds of His assistants, that is the treasuries of His love and remembrance, and the repositories of His knowledge and wisdom. It has forever been the wish of the Eternal King to cleanse the minds of His assistants from the things of the world and all that pertains to there, so that they may be major worthy recipients of the radiant splendors of Him who is the King of all names and attributes. Where it no stranger must not be allowed in the city of the mind, so that the intelligent assistant may enter his home. By this is meant the brightness of His names and attributes, and not His exalted essence, in view of the fact that as that matchless King has forever been, and will eternally remain sanctified above ascent and descent. Therefore, it follows that giving assistance to God in this day, does not and will never consist in debating or disputing with any soul, no rather, what is preferable in the sight of God is that the cities of men's minds, that is ruled by the hosts of self and passion should be subdued by the sword of speech, of wisdom, and of understanding. Then whosoever seeks to assist God must before all else, conquer with the sword of inner meaning and inner explanation in the city of his own mind and guard it from the memory of all except God, and only then can you set out to subdue the cities of the minds of others. This is the true meaning of giving assistance to God. Disobedience has never been pleasing to God, nor was the acts committed in the past by certain foolish ones acceptable in his sight. You know that to be killed in the path of his good will is better for you than to kill any one of God's enemies. The beloved of the Lord must in this day, behave in such a way amid his assistance that they may, by their very deeds and actions, guide all men to the paradise of the God, 
the source of joy. By Him who shines above the perfection of sanctity. The assistance of God have not, nor will they ever, set their hopes on the world and its temporary possessions. The one true God has forever regarded the minds of men as His own, His exclusive possession, and this too is only an expression of His all-surpassing mercy, so that happily mortal souls may be purged and sanctified from all that pertains to the world of dust, and gain admittance to the realms of eternity. Because otherwise that ideal King, that is God, is in Himself and by Himself, sufficient to Himself and independent of all things. Neither does the love of His seekers profit Him, nor can their hostility harm Him. All have issued forth from homes of dust, and to dust they will return, while the one true God alone and single is established on His throne, a throne that is beyond the reaches of time and space, that is sanctified above all speech or expression, or intimation, or description and or definition, and is exalted beyond all thoughts of humiliation and glory. And no one knows this except Him, and those that have the knowledge that is in the Book of God. No God is there but Him, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of kindness. It benefits the kind-hearted ones of the goodness to examine all my messages with the eye of moral correctness and mercy, and not to content himself with the groundless claims of certain individuals. We beg God to graciously assist the King to fulfill what pleases God Himself, and truly what He desires should be the desire of every one of all the worlds. Later this assistant was summoned to Constantinople, and we arrived accompanied by a poor band of exiles. At no time thereafter did we seek to meet with anyone, as we had no request to make and no aim in view but to demonstrate to all that this assistant had no mischief in mind and have never associated with the sowers of disobedience, and by him who has caused the tongues of all beings to speak his praise. While certain considerations made it difficult to make an application for any house, such steps was necessary and taken to protect certain souls. My Lord truly knows what is in me, and he bears witness to the truth of what I say. A righteous king is the shadow of God on earth. All should seek shelter under the shadow of His moral correctness, and rest in the shade of His kindness. This is not a matter that is either specific or limited in its scope, so that it might be restricted to one or any other person, in view of the fact that as the shadow tells of the one who casts it, joyful is His remembrance, God has called Himself the Lord of the worlds, because He has nurtured and still nurtures everyone. Then joyful is His grace that has preceded all created things, and His mercy that has surpassed the worlds. It is clear and evident that whether this perception is seen as right or wrong by the people, those who are associated with its name and have accepted and embraced it as true, and have forsaken their all in their eagerness to partake of the things of God. That they would reveal such self-denial in the path of the love of God, the source of mercy, is in itself a faithful witness and an eloquent testimony to the truth of their convictions. Has it ever been witnessed that a man of sound judgment should sacrifice his life without a good cause or a good reason? And if it is suggested that this people have taken leave of their senses, this too is highly improbable, in view of the fact that as this type of behavior has not been confined to merely a soul or two, no, a vast multitude of every class has drank their fill of the living waters of divine knowledge, and are intoxicated, that have run with mind and soul to the field of sacrifice in the way of the Beloved. If these souls who have renounced all else but God for the sake of His Lord, and offered up their lives and substance in His path, are to be counted as false, then by what proof and testimony can the truth of what others declared be established in your mind? The late Haji Siyad Muhammad, may God exalt his station and immerse him in the ocean of his forgiveness and mercy. Who was one of the most learned divines of his age, and one of the most dedicated and faithful men of his time. So highly was he regarded that his praise was on every tongue, and his righteousness and holy piety was universally acknowledged. But you do not know, that when hostilities broke out with Russia, he who himself had pronounced the decree of holy war, and who with blazed principles, left his native land to rally to the supporters of his faith, after the inconvenience of a brief encounter, he abandoned all the good that he had purposed, and returned to where he had come from, far from God. I have revealed this so that the veil might be lifted, and what is before now remained hidden from the eyes of men is made seen. For more than twenty years this people have, day and night been subjected to the fury of the Soviet Union and his inconsistent wrath, and have been scattered by the tempestuous gales of his displeasure, each to a different land. How many of the children who have been left fatherless, and how many of the fathers who have lost their sons? How many of the mothers who have dared not, out of fear and dread, to mourn their slain young son, before her offspring? How numerous are those who, 
was before possessed of utmost wealth and luxury, and who, when morning came, had fell into speaking humiliation and destitution. No land is there that before this holy war, whose soil has not been tinged with their blood, nor that reached to heaven of their size that have not ascended to God. Throughout the years, the challenges of affliction has unceasingly rained down from the clouds of God's decree, do not despise all of these calamities and tribulations, because the flame of divine love has so blazed in their minds, that even if their bodies should be torn apart they would not forsake their love of Him, who is the best beloved of the worlds, but would welcome with mind and soul whatever might befall them in the path of God. O King! The breezes of the grace of God, the source of mercy, has transformed these assistants and attracted them to His holy court. The witness of a true lover is upon his sleeves. Nevertheless, some of the outwardly learned ones has troubled the luminous mind of the king of the age, concerning these souls who revolve around the tabernacle, the higher perception, of the merciful one and who seek to attain the sanctuary of the true knowledge of God, and hopes that the world-adorning wish of his loving empathic insightful decree that this assistant be brought face to face with the divines of the age, and produce proofs and testimonies in the presence of His Majesty the Shah. This assistant is ready, and takes hope in God, so that such a gathering may be assembled in order that the truth of the matter may be made clear and seen before His Majesty the Shah. Then it is for you to command, and I stand ready before the throne of your sovereign dignity. Then decide for me or against me. The source of mercy said in the Quran, that is his living testimony to all the people of the world, then you wish for death, if you are men of truth. See how he has declared the yearning for death to be the touchstone of sincerity. And in the luminous mirror of your judgment it is clear and evident that the people have chosen, in this day to lay down their lives in the path of the beloved of the worlds. Indeed, where the books are supporting the beliefs of this people, it is to be guaranteed with the blood spilled in the path of God, the loving and joyful one. Then countless volumes would have already appeared among men for all to see. How, we willingly would ask, if is it possible to challenge this people whose deeds are in conformity with their words, and to give acceptance, instead to those who have refused to relinquish one bit of their worldly authority in the path of him who is the unconstrained. Some of the divines who have declared this assistant as an infidel, have at no time met with me. Never having seen me nor become acquainted with my purpose, they have nevertheless spoken as they pleased and acted as they desired. You do know that every claim requires a proof, but not before words and displays of outward holy piety. In this connection the text of several passages from the hidden book of Fatimi, the blessings of God be upon her. That are relevant to the present theme and will be cited in the Persian tongue, so that certain matters that have before now have been hidden, that may now be revealed before your presence. The people addressed in the hidden book of Fatimi, that is today known as the hidden words, that are of those, who though outwardly are known for learning and holy piety, yet are inwardly the slaves of self and passion. He said, O oh, you that are foolish, you do not have a name to be wise. Wherefore you wear the guise of the shepherd, when inwardly you have become wolves, with intent on my flock. You are even as the star that rises before the dawn, and though it seems radiant and luminous, leads the tourists of my city astray into the paths of perdition. Perdition is not being able to have a relationship with God, and without a humble trusting relationship with God no one can have a good relationship with each other as it will be as a house built on sand. And likewise he said, O oh you who seem fair, but you do not know that inwardly you are evil. You are like clear but bitter water, that to the outward people it seems as if you are crystal clear and pure, but when tested by the divine assessor, not a drop is accepted. You are the sunbeam that falls like on the dust and on the mirror, you do not differ, because they are only a reflection, even as does the star and the earth show their reflection, no, immeasurable is the difference. And also he said, O oh essence of desire! At many a dawns have I turned from the realms of the placeless to your home, and found you on the bed of ease busied with any one other than myself. Then before, even as the flash of the Spirit, I returned to the realms of celestial glory, and breathed it in through my retreats above to the hosts of holiness. And again he said, O oh, assistant of the world! Many a dawns have the breezes of my loving kindness blowed over you and found you on the bed of thoughtlessness fast asleep. Crying about your predicament, when the spirit returned to where it came from. Therefore, in the exercise of the royal moral correctness, it is not sufficient to give ear to the pretender alone. God said in the Quran, about the unfailing balance that distinguishes truth from lies, O you who believe. If a wicked man comes to you with news, clear it up at once, 
unless through ignorance you harm others, and afterward reap in of what you have done. Moreover, the holy traditions contain the warning, believe not the false messenger. Certain of the divines, who have never seen us, have misconceived the nature of our perception. However, those who have met us will testify that this assistant is not spoken except in accordance with what God has commanded in the book, and that he has called attention to the following blessed verse, exalted is his word, do you not deny us only because we believe in God and in what he has sent down to us, and in what he had sent down before time? O King of the age! The eyes of these are turned towards you and they are fixed on the mercy of the most merciful. No doubt is there because whatever these tribulations are will be followed by the outpourings of a supreme mercy, and these dire adversities will be succeeded by an overflowing of prosperity. However, we willingly would hope that His Majesty the Shah will himself examine these matters and bring hope to the minds of the people. What we have submitted to Your Majesty is indeed for Your highest good. And God truly is a sufficient witness to me. Wonderful are You, O Lord my God! I bear witness that the mind of the King is in truth between the fingers of Your mighty good will. O my God, if it is Your wish, do You want, in the direction of charity and mercy. You truly are the source of humble goodness, the highest perception, and the most generous. No God is there besides you, the source of joy, and the one whose help is wanted by all. Concerning the prerequisites of the learned, he said, whosoever among the learned guards, who himself defends his faith, resists his desires, and obeys nothing but his Lord's command, is mandatory upon the majority of the people to pattern themselves after him. Should the king of the age reflect on this speech that has streamed from the tongue of him who is the perfection of the revelation of the God, the source of mercy, he would perceive that those who have been adorned with the attributes listed in this holy tradition are scarcer than the philosopher's stone, wherefore not every man that lays claim to knowledge deserves to be believed. Again, concerning the divines of the latter days, he said, the religious doctors of that age will be the most wicked of the divines beneath the shadow of heaven. Out of them mischief has proceeded and to them it will return. And again he said, when the standard of truth is made seen, the people of both the East and the West will curse it. Should anyone dispute these traditions, this assistant will undertake to establish their validity, since the details of their transmission has been omitted before, for the sake of conciseness. Indeed those doctors who have drank from the cup of self-denial have never interfered with this assistant of God. Then, for example, Sheikh Murtada, may God exalt his station and cause him to rest beneath the canopy of his grace. Has showed kindness during our journey in Iraq, and never spoke of this perception other than as God has given authority. We beg God to graciously assist all to do his will and pleasure. However, now all have lost sight of every other consideration, and are bent on the persecution of this people. Then, if it is inquired of by certain people, who by the grace of their Lord, Rest beneath the shadow of your royal mercy and enjoy countless kindnesses. What services have you rendered before, in return for these royal kindnesses? Have you through wise policies annexed further territories to the realm? Have you applied yourselves to anything that would secure the welfare of the people, or the prosperity of the kingdom, and the lasting joy of the state? They will have no other reply than to designate, justly or falsely, a group of people before your royal presence as babish and with which to engage in massacre and pillage. In Tabriz for instance, and in the Egyptian town of Mansuri e, a number of this people were before ransomed and large sums of them were before seized, but you do not know that the account of these matters was forever made in the court of your presence. The reason for all of these things that have come to pass, is that their persecutors finding these unfortunate ones without your protection, do not have any protection, and have gone through more disgraceful matters, and instead occupied themselves with harassing this afflicted people. Numerous confessions and divers creeds have lived peacefully beneath the shadow of your patient and loving will. Let this people also be numbered with them. No, those who serve the king should be energized by such high aims and loving intentions as to continually strive to bring all religions beneath the shelter of his shadow, and to rule over them with perfect moral correctness. To enforce the laws of God is nothing but acquiring a conscience and good qualities, that is the source of universal joy. No, more than that, the divine qualities have always been and will forever remain the perception and way of the preservation of mankind, as witnessed by his exalted words, in suffering you will find life, O men of insight. However, it would be undesirable if the moral correctness of your majesty, for the trespass of a single soul, that a whole group of people should be subjected to the scourge of your wrath. The one true God, 
joyful is his name, has said, none will bear the burden of another. It is clear and evident that in every community there has been, and will forever be, the learned and the ignorant, the wise and the thoughtless, the degenerate and the wholly faithful. That a wise and reflecting soul should commit such a wicked deed is most improbable, in view of the fact that as such a person either seeks after this spiritual world or has forsaken it, if he is of the one that is seeking the spiritual world, he would assuredly have no regard for anything else besides God, and moreover the fear of disobeying God would deter him from unlawful and disgraceful actions and speech, and if he hasn't forsaken the spiritual world, then he would just as assuredly avoid such deeds as would alienate and alarm the people, and act in such a manner as to lose their confidence and trust. It is therefore evident that disgraceful actions have always emerged, and will forever emerge from ignorant and foolish souls.